Welcome to another episode of Off the Record. I'm your host, Chris Shapiro. And in a few moments, I'm going to be sitting down with one of the biggest bands of the late 70s and early 80s, Air Supply. Air Supply was a band that formed in 1975 in Australia, but their music knew no boundaries as they charted hit singles all around the world. They've sold over 20 million albums, but most importantly, they've been sharing their love of music with fans all around the world for over 35 years. So let's go meet Air Supply. Let's start off with a little history of the band. The name Air Supply, where does it originate from? What's the story behind that name? That's his fault. <laughs> the, the true story is we were in Jesus Christ Superstar and we needed a name because we had a record coming out. And we said whoever had a name the next morning we had to go with it. And that night I had a dream and I saw this billboard and it had all flashing lights around it. And in the middle it had two words and it said Air Supply. Okay. So we shared that in the morning. And uh, we went with it. We didn't know what it means. It has no secret meaning or anything like that. But that's awesome. That has that personal connection that you mm. dreamt that, and then you had such success with that. So it's kind of like follow your dreams, and they really? came through for you. Yep. That's, that's true. That's amazing. You're right. Now, I want to ask you, because you guys are international stars. I mean, you can go anywhere in the world, and you've had hits, Asia, South America. Mm. How does your music transcend the cultural barriers, such as language? How do audiences react differently in different parts of the world to your uh, music? Well, primarily, uh, I think it's the melodies, you know, they, they seem to touch people all over the world. In fact, we've had a lot of people tell us that they learnt English by listening to our, okay. our songs, which is pretty deep as well. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they're simple songs. Uh, hey, hang on a minute. No, no. <laughs> they are. <laughs> and you should meet the songwriter. And, uh, <laughs> they're simple songs and people can grasp them in a hurry. Okay. You know, there's a lot of stuff that you listen to, you have to listen to it 20 times or sometimes you never get it. Mm -hmm. But with our songs, I think it's an immediate response that touches people's emotions and, you know, the rest of it kind of falls into place for them. And they just connect instantly with it. Yeah. It's special. Yeah, in fact, we play, uh, when we do play new songs, pretty much by the end of the first time we play it, people are singing most of the lyrics. So, really? Yeah. It's amazing. They do. They, they just latch on. Yeah. But, you know, I... I think there's a little more to it. There's, it's a combination of very of simple things. You know, the songs are very simple, but the the vocals are great. They really are. They're exceptional, and they're easy to remember. You know, and I think that has a lot to do with it. They're easy for people to to digest straight away, and and it has a lasting effect on them. They they can't forget the songs. It seems. I mean, after 37 years, the the songs still get played on the radio and they're all in the movies all the time so they, they have something going on. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you about that. You know, the music industry is plagued with bands that have one or two big hits and then the group dynamic just eats away and mm. the band falls apart. You guys have been out here for 35 years. You need to write a book on how you did it. Like, well, what's the secret to your success for staying together? Well, really there isn't one. You know, we've, we, we have a great passion for the songs that Graham writes. We love to perform them together. We love to work together both in the studio and but more importantly on the road. Mm -hmm. um, we have a tremendous respect for each other's talents and what we bring to the air supply pie. You know, we don't step on each other's toes. Um, it's just a very complimentary, easy relationship for us. We don't work at it, it's just what it is. You know? And we've, there's no ego between the two of us or anybody that works with us because we don't put up with that. <laughs> you know, we're both from the same kind of working class backgrounds and, and our families you know, any time you thought you were better than somebody else, well, they told you that you weren't <laughs> in no uncertain terms. So, um, you know, pretty much the, our, our relationship on every level is very complimentary. It is, yeah. There's, like Russell said, there, there is no ego. We all have a, a part to play in the big picture, you know. And whether that part be big or small, they're all integral to the, the sum of everything. And, and you have to, in our organisation, you have to do your job best you can do it and it has to be of a high standard you know for, for what we call the machine which is air supply on the road to keep going and it is a machine you know uh, and we have a great a great crew and a great band and everybody knows that they have a job to do so it's almost like a family oh yeah, it's very it much is. a family yeah. yeah very much yeah it's a very small amount of people compared with uh, you know tours that we've done in the past mm -hmm and you see each other every day on the road, you can't get away from each other. So you have to have the personalities that can mesh with each other and you know get along because we're often in confined quarters on a bus or flying everywhere. So yeah. very important for people to, to 
to get along with each other. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask you a little bit about songwriting. On your Greatest Hits album, you guys had the song Making Love Out of Nothing at All, mm. and you worked with Jim Steinman, mm. and that song it started off as 20 minutes long, mm. and you got it down to just about six minutes, five minutes. What was that process like, cutting a song like that down? How do you decide what to keep, what to cut out? What's that well, like? That, well, Jim Steinman is probably one of the greatest American songwriters ever, you know, and uh, to work with him was a great thrill for us, and it was in 1983. But all, all his songs are quite long and very epic, you know. Um, and when the song came along, um, the president of our record company, Clive Davis, said, he said, we sh you should do this song, you know. And Jim wanted us to do it. And we met with him and we said, hey, it's, you know, it's like you know, 20 minutes long, we can't do that. So he said, yeah, I know, you know, all my songs are really long. And that's just the way he is. But uh, he was very amenable to cutting it down. You know? Okay. And we just, we just cut it way down and <laughs> Russell went in and sang it. I mean, it's a, it's, it became a, a classic song, you know, it's classic. Yeah, that is a very classic. epic. Classic, you know. And I want to close with this question because you guys do have a wealth of knowledge and experience in the music industry. What advice would you have for the next generation of songwriters, musicians, trying to break it into the music industry? What, what advice do you uh, have to say one thing? Well, you know, it would be two or three things. First of all, I mean, obviously, if you have the talent and that's the given, I think you should surround yourself with the best people you can, do a lot of research into who's going to represent you in every facet of the business. And you have to have perseverance and be able to, you know, uh, take rejection and, and keep your head up and, and move forward. Okay. That's a great thing. You, and you? Yeah, you've got, you've got to get used to a lot of people saying no and telling you how awful you are. Yeah. But you've just got to do, follow your passion, you know, and, and just do it. The thing is, we're a great believer in uh, many are called and few are chosen. And if you give up, you're not meant to be there, you know. So. Uh, Success itself wants people that don't quit, you know. And success also has a, its own way of thinning people out to get to the top. Yeah, you know? And you just got to be one of those and be. Just don't take no. I mean, we, I can't imagine how many times people have told us that we're no good and we we're terrible and uh, you know, but we don't take any notice. You know, in fact, when people used to say that to us, it used to make us even more determined to to come back and say, I'm going to show you. And and that's the secret you've got to have. You know, you've just got to have belief and faith in yourself. Because if you don't, nobody else will. But when you have uh, faith in yourself and passion with what you're doing, people know, they take notice, and they're afraid of it. They really are, you know. They're afraid they go, whoa, this guy's really, he's, he's got something going here, you know. And that's what you've got to do. Right, well, thank you so much for taking the time. You're it's welcome. an honor to meet both pleasure. of you. Thank a you pleasure. so much. And thank you for the music you guys have made. You're welcome. Good luck to you. That does it for this show. And let me say it was an honor to meet the members of Air Supply. They really are some of the nicest guys in rock and roll. And thank you to Rivers Casino for allowing this interview. And thank you for Jill Russell for setting everything up. Thank you to my cameraman, Adam Burns, and to Suzanne Hershka, my mom, for driving me down here today. Uh, we will be back next time for another episode, so stay tuned. And once more, thank you, Air Supply, for all the music that you've provided the world over the years. Thank you.